Uh, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, my name is Osmar Santana. My pronouns are she, her, ella, and I am the Deputy Director at Texas Rising. Thank you again for being here. And I see a lot of familiar faces and a lot of new faces on this call. So let's all drop our names, pronouns, and location in the chat just so that we can get to know each other and see who's repping what cities in, in Texas. Uh, but for those of y'all that are new here, um, I just want to let you know that Texas Rising is a project of the Texas Freedom Network, uh, where we are building the power of young people in our communities and college campuses. Um, our program organizes and builds power with young people of color in a multi-issue intersectional social, social justice framework. And we focus on voter registration and turnout of young Texans. We organize on college campuses and we focus on issue advocacy um, around five main issues, which are voting rights, reproductive justice, immigration reform, criminal justice reform, LGBTQ rights, and climate justice. Um, so Civics Y'all um, is a series of events uh, created to inform young tech Texans about our political systems and to give you the knowledge you need to make informed decisions and get involved. So this year, Civic Seal will have a lens on the Texas legislative session, which happens every odd year and just kicked off a couple of weeks ago. So we are kicking off the Civic Seal sessions today with a LEDGE 101 training led by our political director, Carissa Lopez, and we'll be followed by a series of educational trainings that will focus more on specific issues that will happen every month. Um, and at the end of this, of this training, uh, we'll give you more information on those sessions. But for now, um, I'm going to pass it over to Carissa to get us started. I do want to ask that if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll do our best to get to all of them. Um, um, so thank you all for being here. Chris, I'll kick it over to you. Can you hear me? Can y'all hear me? Okay, great. I thought I had sound issues earlier. So hello. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Carissa Lopez. I'm the political director here at TFN. Thanks for, for joining us for this uh, Legislative 101 training. We're going to go over some high level, like basics of the Texas legislature today. And then we will dive in even deeper for a training next week, once you have the basics down, where we will talk about a little bit more about lobbying, the little, the more nuances of the procedure, how to kill bills, stuff like that. So, but we want to set a baseline first. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay. All right. Oh, not share. Okay, can everybody see the screen? Okay, that's when it loads. Okay, the Texas Legislature 101. Um, I guess like Osmata said, if you have questions, drop them in the chat. Um, we'll, we'll stop for a few times in the middle and at the end and try to get to as many as we can. Um, I promise you if you're thinking it, so is somebody else. So, um, Feel free to ask. So we'll start out with the basics. Um, you know, te Texas is a has a part time legislature, which means that it meets every other year for 140 days for six months, basically January to the end of May uh, in odd numbered years, which, you know, pros and cons to that. A lot of legislatures meet year round. Uh, but Texas meets for six months every two years. Um, however, there may be special sessions that are called, um, which is a, a another 30 day session that the governor can call af if, he, if they feel like the uh, they didn't get their priorities passed. So they'll call a special session to, to deal with them. They can call as many special ses sessions as they want as well. So in each special session lasts for 30 days and the governor sets specific agenda items to, for, the, for them to focus on. So only bills within those agenda items may be up for, um, for debate, up for passage during special session, but there is also like governor could lay out 20 priorities or two. It's really up to them. We currently have a Republican majority in the Senate, 
the House and with statewide elected officials. So the governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general, they're all Republicans right now. Um, there are 83 Republicans and 67 Democrats in the House, 18 Republicans and 13 Democrats in the Senate. Uh, according to the Texas Constitution, the General Appropriations Act or the budget is the only bill that theoretically has to pass during the legislative session. Uh, but of course, there are lots of other things that happen. But by per the Constitution, that's the only thing that absolutely has to happen. So we're, let's talk about some important players, some key players in the legislature. You have the governor. We have Greg Abbott, who's elected statewide to a four-year term in midterm years. So that means every, like the, the big election years that are non-presidential years. So he is next up for re-election, assuming he's going to run for re-election um, in 2022. So in the, in the next, next year. Um, he is a conservative Republican. He is a former judge and the former attorney general. Uh, the governor can issue executive orders. He convenes special legislative sessions and sets their agenda and signs and vetoes legislation passed by the state legislature. Of course, he has immense power in setting the general legislative agenda, um, even though he's not in, in, theoretically intimately part of the process. And then we have the lieutenant governor, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. Uh, Dan, he is also elected statewide to a four-year term in midterm years, also up in 2022. Um, he is a very conservative Republican, uh, a former senator. Before he was a senator, he was a right-wing talk show, talk radio host who famously got a vasectomy on live radio. Um, this is what he did for ratings. Um, and then of course, now he's Lieutenant Governor because what else qualifies you for Lieutenant Governor? Uh, he is the president of the Senate and has immense power over the Senate agenda. So uh, the Senate uh, or the, the Lieutenant Governor really has sole authority over what gets, what bills get passed in onto the Senate floor, right? What get bills passed through the Senate? Uh, things are a little bit different on the House, and we'll go we'll go over that. But on the Senate side, if Dan Patrick doesn't want something to pass, it's not going to. Um, and he's not afraid to change the rules to his benefit. He's not a, he has no shame. Um, he also appoints Senate committees. You know, committees are a group of legislators appointed by the Speaker of the House or the Lieutenant Governor to which proposed legislation is referred to. So a bill is introduced and the first place it goes is to committee. And who, whoever's in those committees, that's a big deal because you want certain legislators, certain friendly legislators to be in committees that your bills are going to because you have build relationships with them. You know that they're gonna fight for or against your issue. Um, so committees assignments and committee chair chairships are really important. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll, I'll repeat, there seems to be in the chat. Uh, look, Dan Patrick is a former right-wing talk show, talk radio host who got a vasectomy on live radio for ratings. So wait, what? Yes, you just, you can Google it if you really want to. Um, um, I just have to ask a quick question. Are y'all just going over officials? I like just came on. Yeah, so we just started, we went over the, we went over the basics that the Texas ledge is, you know, meets every two years for six months. We talked about the governor, we're talking, then we talked about, we're talking about the lieutenant governor, and now we're going to talk about the speaker of the house. Um, the Texas ledge, just one quick question, is it like all the ledge or like just house people? It's all of the legislature. So when I say Texas legislature, I mean the body, how, how laws are passed in the state of Texas for the state. Right. Like you have the federal government, which patch it, passes laws at the federal level, which affect the entire country. You have the Texas legislature, which includes the House, the Senate and the governor um, that pass laws for the state statewide. And then, you know, you have local municipal governments, which pass uh, laws for the city, the county, et cetera. 
Okay, but just to be clear, it's just the Texas legislature, like all of them meet with themselves every two years. Correct. Yeah. So we'll be talking about just the Texas led is the Texas legislature 101 training. So the next person we're going to talk about is the Speaker of the House, Dade Phelan. Um, So the Speaker of the House basically runs the Texas House of Representatives. Um, they are chosen from, from the Texas House of Representatives by colleagues at the beginning of the legislative session. So they are a state rep, you know, like they are elected every two years to represent their house district. And then the body of the Texas House re- elects among themselves somebody to run the house, right? Um, and Representative Phelan is a Republican from Beaumont. He is, quote, a moderate Republican, but that term is all relative, right? Um, He, uh, last session, for example, before he was speaker, this is his first year being speaker, he's very newly elected as speaker, but not newly elected as a representative in the House, in the Texas House. Um, He is a, uh, he, last session, he was chair of an important committee, and for example, blocked a, bi- a bad bill that would have um, preempted non-discrimination ordinances. Preemption, preempted means the state passes the law that overrules a law that like the local government passed. It, passed. And non-discrimination ordinances, we work on those so we can include sexual orientation and gender identity in, um, you know, in, in non-discrimination ordinances. So he blocked a bill, he came out in support of the LGBTQ community, which is great. But he's also awful on local control. He's also, uh, you know, votes with, uh, like on all the to on all the abortion restrictions. So you know, moderate is a relative term. Um, but so he is the pre- presiding officer, though, of the Texas House. So you'll see him, and if you ever watch the Texas House of Representatives meet, you'll see him at the front, you know, talking, acknowledging people with the gavel. Um, stuff like that. He also, on the House side, he appoints committees and the committee chairs, same way that the lieutenant governor does on the Senate, he does for the House. Um, For getting bills to the floor of the Texas House, the process is a little bit more democratic than the Senate. Um, They do have an entire committee that that sets the calendar as opposed to the, the speaker um, having sole authority, but the speaker, of course, still wields immense power. All right. So here's the on the Senate. We talked about this a little bit. Go over it again. But, you know, there's 31 senators total. 13 of them are Democrats. 18 are Republicans, though, as many of you know, one of those Democrats is basically a Republican. Um, And then we have 18 Republicans. um, And each senator represents about 800,000 Texans for four year terms. Can you keep it on that? Wait, can you? Can I just take a quick photo of that slide? Sure. Okay. Sorry for the interruptions. That's okay. And we'll stop for questions um, at a, a couple different points. Um, so we'll, we'll leave room for questions as well. Okie doke. So these are your state Senate districts. I know it's a little blurry, but it, it's impossible to get the entire state of Texas in one slide um, and be able to view them. Here's the house makeup. You have 150 representatives, 67 Democrats, 83 Republicans. Um, you know, it's a lar- much larger body um, than the Senate. So, you know, both Democrats and Republicans swing various levels of conservative and, and liberal. Um, and then each represents about 170,000 Texans for, their, in, for two year terms. And there's your your state house districts, 150 districts. It's, <laughs> you, I know you can't read it, so I can happy to send you a link if you're curious. All right, so before we go into the nitty gritty of like how a bill becomes a law, does anybody have questions about the, um, uh, the officials we just, the, the key players, the elected officials that we just went over? Marissa, I think there was a question here from James. Um, they wanna know if there are uh, term limits for being Speaker of the House? No, there are not. 
Um, no term limits for speaker, no term limits for representatives or senators. Um, there are not. Governor, there, we don't have term limits as far as I know for anything in Texas, at least at the state level. Um, wasn't the spe former speaker forced to resign in 2020 after that recording drama? Yes, the last speaker, if you wanna do some Googling, you can hear um, some in insider drama that the last speaker of the house was forced to resign. Well, he, he didn't run again, he didn't resign right then and there, but he didn't run for office. He didn't run for again, and he was a one-term speaker. Did I miss anything else? I see that um, would we'll be be able to have access to the slides for future reference. Uh, I think this is, this is being recorded, so you should be able to go wet back and watch it. <clears throat> but I'm happy to to share slides as well. Um, and then, is there a list of special interests for each state representative? So you should. I, uh, campaign finance reports are all public. Um, and I recommend you go look those up. I th would think, you know, we'd be happy to send you a link so you can look look up who all has donated to all of your state representatives and state senators. Um, and last question before we move on, both House and Senate districts are determined by population. Therefore, the Senate simply represents more constituents. That is correct. Um, they're, they're roughly, you know, try to get this a same population. It doesn't mean they can't gerrymander to get themselves there, which is why redistricting this year is going to be so important. Um, but the Senate, yes, it represents more, more constituents. Their districts are much larger, as you can see. So like, yeah, that's going to take too long. Okay. The process. Let's, let's dig in a little bit here. So this is the basic steps of a bill becoming a law in the state of Texas. There are micro steps in here. Um, there, this is this is a very broad view on the 102 or the 201, whatever we want to call it. The 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 next legislative legislature training. Um, we will dig into this process more. If you want to nerd out with me on it, um, we'll dig in. Um, but uh, for now, we're going to keep it high level to give you a baseline. So the step one is a bill is introduced in either chamber. When we say chamber, that means the House or the Senate. The House is one chamber. The Senate is, a cha is one chamber. So a bill gets introduced to either the House or the Senate. Then step two, a bill gets assigned to a committee. Remember the committees are groups of legislators appointed by the speaker or the lieutenant governor. Um, to which a bill is referred to, and then that committee here holds a public testimony or not for the bill. Um, so the first, the bill has to get assigned to a committee. After this point, a bill can move no further. And a lot of bills completely die after step two. They do not have to go any further. Um, and so really <laughs> the Texas legislature is designed to kill bills instead of pass them. Uh, and sometimes that works in our favor, um, sometimes that doesn't. Uh, so, so just keep in mind that I'm gonna go through this whole process, but most bills do not make it through the, through the full process. Many don't make it past step two. So then we have what we're call, I'm gonna call it step 2.1. So a bill gets assigned to a committee and then they can, they can schedule a public hearing where public testimony is allowed. This usually is where a big flashpoint for organizing. We organize a, ro a lot around public testimony um, and because that's where the general public really has the most input when they can, when a, they can go to a public hearing and have a, a few minutes to testify and talk to the legislators of that committee about why they're for or against a bill. So the public hearing is, is scheduled. A bill gets voted out of committee. So the, the legislators, either the senators or the house members that sit on that committee, that are members of that committee will vote whether or not they wanna move the bill out of that committee. So, the, uh, the, so if it does get voted out of committee, then the get, bill gets put on the house or the Senate floor calendar. So the calendar is, the order of business for the day on the floor, where the floor is where, um, you know, the floor is where the full house or Senate meets, right? Um, 
you know, right now in committees, there's just a few legislators that are members of these committees. When it goes to the full floor, when we say something's going to the full floor, that means that um, all of the members of that chamber are meeting to discuss, debate, vote on this bill. So after it gets voted out of committee, it goes on the calendar for the House or the Senate so that it's on the list of bills to go to the full floor. And then it gets debated on the floor. Um, and in the, one, in the 201 training that we'll do next week, we'll talk about some tactics that we use when a bill gets debated on the floor, right? Like how we as advocates and, and lobbyists um, use the, all, go through all of these steps and, and how we advocate. Um, so the bill gets debated on the floor and then it'll get voted on. And so if it gets voted on, um, if, if the bill gets voted on and it passes, then it'll go to the other chamber and the process will start all over again in the other chamber. If it makes it through this whole process in the other chamber, that's when um, the, it goes to the governor for him to sign or veto the bill. We will talk about virtual, about the rules for hearings in a minute. I have that here. I bet any, any questions on this? Um, like I said, if you, if you really want to dig into this process and, and know the, the nuances that we haven't talked about here, um, you can nerd out with me next week. I was about to say, when's the nerd session? It's next week. So I'll leave that to, I'm sure you'll get an invite from your RFCs and, or um, Ray and Osmata. It'll be, it'll be posted. I think it's at this time on Thursday again, um, where we'll talk about what the different calendars committees do, why like different floor debate strategies and amendment strategies. We'll talk about that next week. Yeah, and also make sure to reshare the uh, registration link for all the sessions for civics, y'all. So. I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, so on the floor debate step on either side, I see that the arrow kind of points up and goes to the opposite chambers committee. Can you, I'm not sure if you already explained that, can, but can you explain why it would go back up to the committee after going through like the house process, for example? Yeah, I think that the way it's drawn, it's just showing that like that's their, their way. This is a graphic I found online, not one I mm -hmm. created. Um, okay. But I think that what they're trying to say is that, so it goes from the floor debate on the Senate or the House, if it makes it through that process and gets voted out, then it gets assigned to a committee on the other, in the other chamber. So notice how the floor debate on the Senate gets pointed to the House, the floor right. debate on the House goes to, gets pointed to the Senate. That's just their way of showing, now it's gonna do the whole thing over again in the opposite chamber. So wherever the bill starts, it has to go through both chambers. Correct. It'll okay. start going through the chamber um, through the with, that it was originated in that the bill mm -hmm. started in. Um, so sometimes, though, in order to make things go quicker, we have what we call companion bills. Those are identical yeah. bills. Um, like a House member will file a bill, and then a Senate a senator will file an identical bill on the Senate, and then they can, if if it's something they really want to get passed to save time. Um, and make sure that things get through. They'll, like I said, they'll file identical bills in each chamber, and then they'll go. You can they'll go through the process for the whole at the, simultaneously for each chamber. So right. that way, it's already been done at the end, and then they just have to make sure there's no changes. Do you happen to know like the quickest they can get a bill passed? I would think that it's like a long time. <laughs> <laughs> if they really want to get something passed, uh -huh. probably they could probably do it in a week uh, okay it quick um, yeah. I would, maybe, no maybe not i guess it depends like there's rules that you they'd have to follow but you know they can always amend the vote to amend the rules they can right. do some shady things which they do <laughs> sometimes um so uh that is why it's our job to make sure that we're watching it that we're making mm -hmm. that they know that if they do anything that it's gonna we're going to hold them accountable um, right. if they do shady things um, if they try to like you know Greg Abbott has said that he wants he wants to um, take over cities budgets in some form or fashion that defund the police 
right? Like that's, I don't know how that would work. Um, but you know, we don't want a priority of the governor to get rammed through. So we need to make sure that our representatives know that this is a really important priority for us and that they better not like, they better not ram it through. Right. Right. So what's the yeah. issue if we talk to our reps in Senate? Because I'm in a weird district where like my reps are Dems, but my senators are Republicans and they're like pro they're like Trumplicans at this point. So like how can I convince them to like not like vote for Greg Abbott's like ideas? Yeah, so we're going to go over some strategies and tactics for, so for advocacy in a minute. But I think, you know, but contacting them and then well you know i i think as texas rising we're going to brainstorm creative ideas on how we can um hold these electeds accountable let me take a look at the chat to see here osmana did i yeah i think there are a couple of really good questions so katie uh wants to know um what are we going to do with the lack of virtual hearings do you have any and yes, that. I have a slide for that. So I'm going to put a pin in that question. Cool. And then if there's more questions um, on virtual testimony, we'll talk about it then. Okay, and I think Catherine had a question. Uh, what determines if a bill is introduced via House or Senate first? And is one more common than the other? It just depends on if a Senator or a House of, uh, a House of Representatives member wants the bill, like originates the bill. It doesn't really, it's just whoever wrote the bill or whoever wants to file the bill, they have to file it in the chamber that they're elected to. So that's it. Well, but they work asked. together sometimes across, like they'll work, to, like a, a House member might work with a Senate member so that they file identical bills on each side, um, but they have to file it in the chamber that they were elected to. Okay, and I don't think I missed any other ones, unless anybody else has any questions. The House and Senate can create amendments, but if there's a partner bill, I think this is skipped. So, um, Denise, the House and Senate can create, a, they, they can each amend the bill when it's on in their own chamber. And then at the end, they'll have to go to what we call conference committee to make sure that they're like to so that they can debate any changes and come to an agreement on any changes. It's another place the bill can die. And I know it's not in this simple graphic here and we could talk about it more next week. But um, so if, if, if that's kind of what happened last legislative session when I talked about the, the current speaker killing a bill um, and standing up for the LGBTQ community, like the house didn't wanna pass it. What, the house refused to pass this bill without protections for the LGBTQ community and the Senate refused to put them in there and that's how they killed the bill um, because they couldn't agree on those changes. And no, there's no popular vote on laws. That's where you elect, you elect members to make those decisions for you. Okay. I'm going to move on to some important dates we can talk about. So Bill filing began on November 9th, 2020. So right after the November election, members, at least current members, new members can start filing yet, but they could start filing bills. So um, they've been filing bills for a lot, for several months now. So there's a lot of bills. I don't, I haven't looked to see how many yet, uh, recently, but um, they've been filing, they can pre, what we call pre-file bills, just basically, which means filing before legislative session starts. Um, the first day of legislative session was last week on January 20, 12th, 2021. Um, that was this year's first day. Um, there is a deadline. So they have to file all of their bills by March 12th, 2021. So that's the bill filing deadline. But that also means that there's quite a bit of time for them to still file bills, which means, you know, we do our best to anticipate what's being filed. Um, we see a lot what we see a lot of what's getting filed, but they can file things up until March 12th, 2021. So we won't know exactly um, what bills are going to be filed until then. And then May 31st, 2021 is what we call signy die. Um, I'm sure that's not how you say it, but that is how they mispronounce it in Texas. It is the last day of regular the regular legislative session. Um, but of course, they can call special sessions, which have our own timeline that, that are 30 days long. They can call as many as they want, but this is for the regular legislative session that we're in right now. Um, June 20th, 2021 is the deadline for the governor to sign or veto, veto bills. 
I see, oh, JJ, who assigns bills to each committee in each chamber? That's a great question. The speaker assigns bills on the House side to the House committees, and the, the Lieutenant Governor assigns bills uh, to the Senate committees. Any Senate majority or minority leader, or is it just? They have whips, right? Um, and stuff, and they have caucus chairs uh, on each side. So not like, not in the, I don't think they call, not really majority leaders, but they have, they have elected positions through the caucus. So these are some very, very broad priorities that we're watching, right? We are going to, I know through civics, y'all, through other, uh, through your, um, chapter meetings, we're going to dive into these and specific bills in much more detail later on. But these are the big buckets of issues that we're watching. Um, so if you have specific questions, I may or, we may or may not be able to get to those today about specific bills, but know that this is like a big part of the work that we're y'all are going to be doing during the legislature. So there will be a lot more conversations to dive into these issues. Um, First on our top defensive priorities, you know, we, we are still in the minority um, in the House, Senate, and at the statewide level. So it is going to be a big defensive year, but we have gained a lot of ground and a lot of momentum, um, and we've been doing movement building work for a long time. So, you know, it's going to be a, be it's going to be a defensive year, but we're making progress. But we do have our eye on some really bad anti-trans legislation. They're, they've been targeting across the country trans minors. And we've seen, we're seeing bills in Texas that mirror um, bills that don't allow minors to get hormone therapy, that don't allow them to participate in sports. Um, so those are really concerning that we're, we're watching and we'll be working on. Religious exemptions, those are bills that, those are policies that basically give people the right to exempt themselves from certain laws based on a, certain, a sincerely held religious belief. Um, those always come up and actually gain a decent amount of traction in the legislature. Uh, abortion bans, it's a, it's, that is a big one that we're really watching this year because of the change in the makeup of the Supreme Court. So, you know, in the past, we've seen that, uh, you know, the courts have been have stopped a lot of um, restrictions. Um, now, I'm sure very likely that that's not the case. So we're watching that really closely. Um, preemption, like I said, preemption is when the uh, state, or it could be, yeah, when, when a, the state passes a law that overrules a law at the local level. So Policing, like de the defund police stuff that I mentioned, and paid sick. They tried to do this last legislative session to get rid and not allow any local governments to pass paid sick policies, earn paid sick time. Um, and we're watching for that to come back. And always have our eye on preemption for other issues, but those are two big ones. Sex ed. Um, we uh, think there's always... Uh, bills that try to increase red tape, make it harder for school districts to teach sex ed. So we're watching that. Um, and then of course, redistricting, it's, which happens only every 10 years. Uh, so this is, that's a huge, huge thing. Because of COVID, redistricting has been delayed. So it's going to happen later on in legislative session or in special session. But um, that's a really big priority. And it's going to suck a lot of oxygen out of the legislature this year. I put it in the defensive priorities because we are in a minority, but hey, maybe, you know, we're gonna be pushing for some proactive policies in the redistricting process. And then um, proactive opportunities. These are opportunities like for good bills to pass, good bills for us to build, like do movement building around, to, to message uh, around um, that we are gonna focus on. A one of them is a comprehensive non-discrimination ordinance. Our friends at Equality, Equality Texas are working hard to get this bill introduced. That would add, you know, non-discrimination ordinance is, is the law that says you can't discriminate based on gender, race, religion. Um, to add sexual orientation and, and gender identity to a statewide non-discrimination ordinance. Um, sex ed also is a good proactive opportunity uh, to make, so that other districts can teach 
sex ed, um, online voter registration, um, the George Floyd Act, which is a big police reform act uh, that the Black Caucus is spearheading. Um, and then of course, climate justice, like railroad commission reform, flaring, um, you know, and, and doing work on that. So like I said, we'll dive into these a lot more later, but this is just a, a 30,000 foot view. Um, some questions. Looks like folks are getting answer, getting some answers in the chat, which I love. Um, I, I have a question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, friend. We can do Samuels in a bit. Are you sure? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Uh, quick, I'll be quick. So where can we like see all of these bills and read a little bit more about them and like see when they were introduced? Is there a website? There is. And I am going to go over that in just a little bit. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, state bills focusing on COVID-19. Yes, there are. I, having not read all of the thousands of bills that have been filed so far, I don't know what all has been filed, but yes, COVID um, is going to also take up a lot of oxygen at the Capitol. It's going to take up a lot of um, time. Um, I, there's going to be stuff around education. There's going to be um, stuff around healthcare. You know, they're bring, they're, a lot of folks are pushing, I mean, a lot of Democrats are pushing Medicaid expansion, um, specifically around COVID. Um, I mean, pay, paid sick around COVID. Um, so definitely going to be some COVID related bills. Lexi answered the redistricting question. Thank you, y'all. Um, Anything on the border wall that is, right, Denise, it's more of a federal issue Though we have seen in the past, the state trying to kick in funding to help <laughs> fund the border wall. But we did see the new administration um, halt any border wall construction and funding through an executive order yesterday. So hopefully that won't, we won't have to worry about that. All right, I'm gonna... One quick question, what does NDO mean? That's the non-discrimination ordinance that I mentioned, you know, um, that uh, that's, you know, the, the a non-discrimination ordinance is, is a law that says you can't discriminate based on sex, race, religion. So they're trying to, we want to add sexual orientation and gender identity to a, to a non-discrimination ordinance. Okay, so some of y'all were asking about text the legislature during COVID. Also, this hashtag on Twitter is where you can get some, like where people post and use this hashtag for legislative legislative information. So um, if you ever like something happens and you like you want to follow, follow this hashtag. Um, so let's let's talk about uh, committee hearing. So here's what we know. We had hoped and worked and advocated for virtual testimony for committee hearings. They are not going to allow virtual testimony for the general public. Um, they are, but they are gonna continue to have unlimited in-person testimony. Masks and social distancing are gonna be required and they are going to limit the amount of people in a committee room but that is at the discretion of the committee chair on to, to enforce that. Um, committee chairs can invite testimony. There can be invited testimony. So meaning like the chair could say, I wanna personally, personally invite these people. They will be given a virtual option to testify, um, but not the general public. But house members, can participate in committee hearings virtually from other parts of the Capitol. So they can like be in their offices and participate virtually in committee hearings, but members don't have to be there. Um, quorum, meaning the minimum, quorum is the minimum amount of members that have to be present in order for a meeting to take place. Um, so they, they've changed quorum to meet, uh, is met with a minimum of two in-person members. So let's say you have a committee of 
10 members how on the house side these are just house um two members have to be there in person the rest of them can be in their offices listening in virtually um but of course they did not give an option for the general public to, to testify virtually they are now um, giving the public the option to submit written comments that will go on the record. Um, they can electronically submit written comments, but, uh, and, and so that's, that's where we'll lean heavily. There's gonna, we're gonna talk about some advocacy tactics in a minute this is, that we'll just touch on. Um, but these, these are the committee hearing rules that we're going into session with on the House side. The Senate rules are to be determined. They have, um, for the committees, with the, when they're interacting with the general public, they have not set those rules yet. Um, so, yeah. So I'm looking to see if I have any questions. Yeah, written test, electronically submit, submitted written comments, meaning you, they haven't established how, what that process is gonna be yet like how, they're, how you're gonna submit written comments, but they are saying there's going to be a process to submit written comments on the record for or against a bill. So, super disappointing. Um, will the written testimony ever be heard, even be heard? I feel like they're just gonna archive them. So we worked to make sure that those would be on the public record so that way we could at least point to and say, look, we had 300 written comments against this bill. Like this is not something the general public wants. Um, it will be harder. I think we're gonna have to do our job as advocates to make sure that members know how many written comments are submitted. Members know um, to go read them, right? Like it's gonna be a harder job. It's definitely not ideal, um, but what we, what we'll have to work around. So how can we advocate? I mean, we have, we've been living in this virtual world. It'll be a year in March. Um, so we're adjusting. This is our first legislative session having to do this yet though. So, um, you know, virtual meetings with legislators, that's a thing. I mean, even though the Capitol is technically open, a lot of legislators, which I do not blame them, I would not want to either, are not gonna have an open door policy because that's that um, risk spread of COVID, but a lot of them are doing like signups for Zoom meetings to meet with, right? So we're, I know we're gonna do advocacy day that way. So um, virtual meetings with legislators and their staff is a good advocacy tool still. Um, social media pressure, virtual events, calls into their offices. Somebody mentioned faxes into their offices. I don't know if they even have fax machines still, but um, you know, press and earn media flooding them with written comments, just a few of the things. But I think like one of the things that as Texas Rising will talk about and that we'll work on and brainstorm is how can we get creative in this virtual space to hold these electeds accountable, to put pressure on them um, when we can't be there in person um, because it's too dangerous. Quick question, will they, um, because of what's been going on at the Capitol, like statewide and in DC, Will it change like how we can interact with them after COVID ends? Um, probably not, but I don't wanna, I mean, that's a, probably a long ways off. So um, I don't have a good sense of that at this point. Um, so that's, those are just some ideas, but I uh, think that like, this is, Y'all are really good at thinking of new and innovative ways um, to, uh, to, to put pressure on electives, to, put pre to advocate um, in these spaces. So I think like putting that hat on and thinking like, what can we do? Can like, you know, hosting virtual events, tweet storms. I, I am not the right person to come up with these ideas. That's why mine sound very unoriginal. But um, I think that this is a great opportunity for us to think creatively. Okay. Um, I am going, let's see, how much time? We have 15 minutes left. I'm gonna spend a few minutes um, going over, oh, not questions yet. 
um, on how to track the legislature yourself. So somebody asked where you can go to, to look up all the bills and stuff. I'm going to take you to that website. But before I do that, um, I'm going to see if I'm missing any questions. Feel free to keep typing questions. Um, yeah, I mean, we have, there's, you know, there's a new COVID strain that's 70% more contagious, right? That is in Texas now. Like it, it's it's ridiculous that they are not seeing the writing on the wall and providing virtual like virtual options. Um, and it it does put us at you know if the disadvantage, but we have to turn that into an advantage because you know we're going to get creative virtually. Um, so let's let's oop not questions let's go to the Texas legislature online. So this is the website, it's a public website um, called the Texas legislature online. You can see the URL here, capital.texas.gov. Um, and this is what we use, a lot, what most people use. Anybody can create an account, it is free, where you can create your own bill list that you wanna track, um, where you can put, create your own alerts to, uh, to like get emails when a bill moves. Um, this is this is where where you go. You can find committees and committee assignments, right? Like let's say I want to look at the corrections committee. This was for last session. This is the members. Goes to you can see there all their chairs. So has lots of information here, um, including. Let's look up a bill of all the information you need to know about a particular bill. So let's look at a bill, for example, SB 22. From This was from uh, the 2019 legislative session. This was the bill that barred uh, Planned Parenthood essentially, um, but all, any other abortion provider or affiliate of the provider from prohibiting, from interacting with a government entity, meaning they couldn't you know, go into schools and teach sex ed. For example, provide other healthcare services and uh, with any sort of governmental contract, right? Um, so this is SB 22. So you can see there were, this was a really intense bill. I got a lot of attention. And you can see here, this is all of the actions that were taken on this bill, right? So it's a lot more complicated than that simple chart. Um, so we'll go into, into detail more of this sometime next week. Um, but you can see where it's highlighted. That means there was a record vote on something. Um, these are all amendments. And then there were record votes on them. What happened to these amendments? If you click on them, you kind of have to decipher and read through um, the journal on what happened. But if you take, if you just sit and concentrate, it's actually not that complicated. I'm not a lawyer and, I, and I've and i learned how to do it. Um, so you can see all of, all of this. So I'm not gonna take too much time to go over it, but um, you can play around, create an account, you know, track your bills all in here. Um, that's that the history is like the overview, the, the text, this is all the different versions of the bill that you can just read through, right? Um, this is the introduced version and the version that eventually passed. Again, the actions. Companions is what I mentioned whenever there's like bills that are the exact same or similar. This was the, the house companion. This bill had a lot of amendments. Not all bills have this many amendments, but this one did. So this is all the, the amendments that were submitted on this bill. Authors, basic bill stages are here, um, right? Like you can find all of the information you you need here and here in my TLO the alerts if you log in here let's see this was mine so this was a couple of the bills from this session I'm using a different service now but um, like you could these are bills that on if they move like if they get a, if, if something happens I get an email that says this bill this action was taken on this bill so you can sign up for those too sign up for email alerts on whichever, however many bills you want to. So I don't wanna, there's a lot here. Um, I wouldn't 
I'm not going to go over the whole thing. I think it's also really dense, but it's fun to kind of play around with. And um, you can, you know, search, bill search. This is where you, you want to look. You, you can do your search here, including by subjects, actions, author. Um, let's see. So you can select the action, like any bill that was adopted. All right. This is where you're going to search. So you can find, like, if you want to find all bills that related to abortion, it'll pull up anything and you'll kind of, you'll have to cut, you'll, you have to kind of read through, glance through to see, um, which if, because it's not going to, you know, some of them you may not care about, right? Um, so that's that. And questions. Let's see. I, I'm going to go through some. So the last question I see is I might, uh, the website allow us to advocate for or against a bill or this, is this just for tracking? This one's just for tracking. This is not a bill that um, you can register. This is not a website you can register a position on. Once um, this year, there's going like, because of COVID, there's going to be a way to submit those written comments. They haven't come up with the pro procedure for that yet, how we're going to be able to submit written comments, but that'll be when you want to um, submit your, submit your, um, at your testimony for or against bill. Okay. Stop sharing. Um, what other, what other questions do y'all have? I tried to answer them as we went. But, um, but yeah, what, what else can I answer for you? Do you, you know if there's, any, is there's currently anyone pushing a conversion therapy ban? Um, probably if they haven't yet, they will. I know like Celia Israel, Representative Celia Israel um, filed a conversion therapy ban last, last session. I think she's gonna file it again. So if she hasn't yet, she will. That would be one of them. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We know, you know, I think I'm, we're watching on voter suppression, you know, anybody that lives in Houston, Harris County, um, they did some great things during the election for 20, November of 2020, but, you know, certain electeds didn't like those, those tactics to make uh, voting open and accessible. So we're watching them try to, they might come after some of those procedures, et cetera. So keeping an eye out. Does anybody have any other questions? So is this um, going to be uh, every Thursday is going to be kind of uh, a little bit kind of building off of things uh, or building on top? Um, I saw this was a repeating event. Yeah, so we're, this is going, so we're doing uh, this week and next week will be the legislature, legislature, like basic trainings, right? We'll do the 201 next week. And then after that, it's going to go to biweekly and we'll dive, then we'll dive into issues. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. I just, I just, I just briefly saw, so I didn't, I didn't look at the exact yeah. dates. I just saw sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, this week and next week, back to back, and then we'll go by every other week um, and talk about issues and bills. And then towards the end of the legislature, when things get really um crazy right like then th things are moving really quickly we'll just do some updates some insider updates on what's going on too okay great and where okay oh, oh, no, sorry go ahead oh, i was just gonna say where is the is the next the next session is going to be like pretty much the exact same as this or where can the link for this be found so we can like share it with other people Marissa, do you want me to quickly talk about yeah, that? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. So, <laughs> okay. sure. yeah. So let but me actually, do, yeah, let me quickly share my screen with y'all just so that y'all can see some of the upcoming trainings that we're going to be leading. Um, so just put this in a Google Doc real quick here. So um, the upcoming civics y'all trainings that we have. So they're all going to be from four to five. Uh, the next one is on the 28th. That's going to be your ledge, ledge 102. And as Carissa mentioned, it's just going to be like building off of ledge 101. So a little bit more in depth. Um, and then we are going to start diving into uh, issue focus 
focused trainings where we'll have experts on the subject talk a little bit more about what is already happening in Texas and like what is upcoming, like what bills are we expecting. So February 25th, we'll be doing LGBTQ and repro, uh, March 11th, criminal justice reform and immigration, and March 25th, climate change and voting rights. So I'm going to drop the link here um, in the chat now uh, so that you all have that. Um, and as, uh, as somebody just mentioned right now, if you registered already, um, you got a bunch of, uh, you know, things for your calendar. So these should already be in there. But if you didn't register through that link and somebody just sent you the link to join this one, please make sure that you uh, join and register through that one. That way you have all of the upcoming sessions already in your calendar ready to go. Um, and then um, just to finish up here, um, we we also touched briefly on redistricting. So um, Texas Rising in coalition with uh, TCRP and MOVE, uh, we are going to be leading some redistricting trainings every Tuesday and Thursday at three, um, where we'll be going over a little bit more about what is redistricting, uh, what are the committees on the House and the Senate look like, how can you uh, create uh, and submit to your own written testimony. So I am going to be dropping those link, that link to uh, register for those trainings also on the chat. So redistricting. I know how to spell that. I am a grown up. Okay, drop that there. So please make sure you sign in through there. Um, and then also just very quickly before I hand it back to Carissa, if anybody here that is new to this, and this is your first time hearing about Texas Rising, we have several chapters across the state. And if you want to be a little bit more involved, not just around like the ledge, but just in other things in general, I am dropping my email in the chat as well. So just email me, let me know your region, um, and I will do my best to connect you with a coordinator that's uh, near you. Great. Yeah. Well, we have a, I'm going to try to answer in the last like three minutes, the last couple of questions, if that's okay. Um, let's see, sessions, session started, legislative session started last week on January 12th. So it's already started. They did basically go home for two weeks. Um, after they adopted the, the rules, these new ver rules um, because of COVID. So they, they got out of the building for a little while, but they're coming back in person next week on the 26th, I think. But it officially started, they gaveled in on the 12th. Um, yes, you can be politically motivated while still in your PJs, yes. Uh, when Do we know when bills will start being assigned to committees? So on the Senate, they already assigned, made committee assignments. The Lieutenant Governor already assigned like which senators were gonna be on each committees. The House, we don't anticipate the, to, that to happen till prob probably next month, it's just a guess, but um, the House has not assigned committees yet. Um, so the Senate could start at any time. They don't usually start very, that early though. Um, and then the House won't start until next month. Um, so bills might be starting to get assigned, but I don't, they probably won't have the first committee hearing, uh, at least on the Senate side for a little while, because they haven't even adopted testimony rules. And then the House, they haven't even assigned members to committees yet, so it'll be a minute. Um, so there's some good questions about agenda. I am going to healthcare that's really broad. So um, we can, I think that that's the kind of question we should definitely talk about in our power hours that you're having. Um, so we could, so, cause we are in the process of developing a, the Texas Rising legislative agenda based on feedback. Um, so I think that like, that's a really good conversation to have uh, and, and bring forward in your, um, in your, uh, student chapters, including, um, you know, at, asking representative file a bill amongst our intersectional issues. That's a good long-term goal um, to have there. Um, and advocating around Medicaid expansion, right? Like, I think those are all really good things to talk about. It's definitely something that we're for, whether or not, like, how, you know, what advocacy tactics we do around that is something that we all need to talk about and decide, discuss. So I'm going to turn it back over to Ray and Osmada um, to close us out. But uh, it was really great talking to y'all. And I can't wait to nerd out with you next week. <laughs>